Hello everyone, I'm Stu Adler, a professor of chemical engineering at the University of Washington. The purpose of this video is to provide a brief summary of McCabe Thiele analysis and its application in a couple of different contexts relevant to our unit operations laboratory, namely the analysis of tray efficiency in tray distillation and prediction of batch distillation performance based on steady state measurements at total reflux. To perform this analysis, you'll need a few things. The first is equilibrium data for a binary mixture you're interested in separating in the form of a Y versus X diagram. Preferably, you have this data in digital form so you can print as many copies as you need if you're doing things graphically, or in the form of tabulated data so you can perform the analyses described here in MATLAB, Python, or Excel. You'll also need some data on flow rates and compositions in your column. What exactly you need depends on what you're trying to accomplish. In the following, I will assume you have the ability to convert whatever rates and compositions you can measure to molar flow rates and mole fractions. Finally, it's helpful to use a spreadsheet program, like Excel, to tabulate and graph results. First, let's briefly review what a distillation column is and how it works. The basic idea is that we have a series of gas-liquid contacting stages that take in liquid and gas from adjacent stages, put them in intimate contact so that they establish vapor-liquid equilibrium, and then produce gas and liquid streams that exit each stage in equilibrium. We can visualize this on a TX diagram as a series of overlapping tie lines, where each tie line represents the equilibrium on each stage. The top stage produces a gas enriched in the more volatile component, while the bottom stage produces a liquid which is enriched in the less volatile component. Thus, if we continuously feed a binary mixture someplace in the middle of the column, we can largely separate the two components. In general, the more stages we have, the greater the purity of the product streams, although there are some important limitations, such as the existence of an azeotrope. One thing you'll notice is that the tie lines for adjacent stages overlap in composition. This overlap is important because we need to provide a driving force for the liquid and gas fed to each stage from adjacent stages to boil and condense. We also want to minimize the remixing of the components, which is achieved if the liquid from the upper adjacent stage and the gas from the lower adjacent stage have close to the same composition. Finally, we also want to avoid having to heat and cool each stage individually. This is accomplished by using the enthalpy released by condensing the gas entering each stage to boil the mixture and produce the gas exiting that stage. Usually the column is only heated at the bottom stage, called the pot, which produces an upward flow of gas, V, called the vapor boil-up rate. Meanwhile, cooling is provided only at the top of the column, where the exiting gas is partially or totally condensed. Since we often want liquid products, this is usually done with a total condenser, which produces a liquid of the same composition as the gas exiting the top stage. Part of the liquid exits as product called the distillate with flow rate D, while the rest, L equals V minus D, flows back down the column. The ratio of L over D is often called the reflux ratio. If you've taken a chemi separations course, you may recall that the principal assumption of McCabe Thiele analysis is that the ratio, L over V, of the downward molar liquid flow to the upward molar gas flow is approximately constant throughout the column. This approximation is most valid when the two components have similar volatility, which is exactly the situation we usually have when we're using distillation as a separation method. Also, in many design problems, other uncertainties, such as tray efficiency or mass transfer, dominate the accuracy of any design calculations we do. So the use of a more rigorous stage-to-stage -stage energy balance doesn't always help us that much. Finally, even if we're in a situation where we need or want to perform more rigorous energy balances, McCabe Thiele is a useful gut check on whether our calculations make physical sense. So it's worth doing anyway. With the energy balance taken care of, our remaining task is to work out the mass balance and equilibrium on each stage. In the McCabe-Thiele method, this is accomplished using a Y versus X diagram, which expresses the equilibrium mole fraction of the more volatile component in the gas, Y, versus the mole fraction in the liquid, X, 
parametric in temperature at fixed pressure. Thus, for any stage I, labeled here from top to bottom, the equilibrium line on the diagram represents the relationship between Xi and Yi of the liquid and gas respectively exiting stage I. Meanwhile, under the assumption of constant L over V, we can perform a material balance around the condenser and any number of stages in the upper portion of the column, resulting in a relationship between the molar concentration of the gas entering each stage, Yi plus 1, and the molar concentration of the liquid exiting that stage, Xi. This relationship corresponds to a straight line on the Y-X diagram with slope L over V that intersects Y equals X at a mole fraction corresponding to the distillate concentration, Xd. In other words, due to material balance constraints, the concentrations of the gas and liquid exchanged between adjacent stages must fall along this locus. This line is called the operating line of the column and depends on the distillate concentration Xd and ratio L over V. Using the operating line and equilibrium line, we can predict the composition of the gas and liquid on each stage of the column under the assumption of equilibrium. Starting with the condenser, we know that the composition of the gas exiting the top stage, Y1, is the same as the distillate concentration, Xd. This corresponds to the point where the operating line intersects Y equals X. Moving to the left, we can find a point on the equilibrium line corresponding to equilibrium on stage 1, which gives us the concentration X1 of the liquid exiting stage 1. Using the operating line, we can then determine the gas concentration Y2 entering stage 1. Using the equilibrium line again, we can determine the concentration X2 of the liquid exiting stage 2, which in turn allows us to predict the gas concentration Y3 entering stage 2, etc. This graphical process is called stepping off the stages and allows the design engineer to determine how many stages they will need to achieve a certain purity of product given a particular starting or feed composition. You may recall from your separations course that we usually consider two operating lines, one above and one below the feed. But I'll stop the review here and refer you to your separations notes for more details on the use of McCabe Thiele in design. Instead, what I'd like to do here is consider the use of McCabe Thiele in two additional contexts, in particular the analysis of tray efficiency and the analysis of batch distillation. First, a bit about column efficiency in general. Based on a review of McCabe Thiele, you can see that a principal assumption of the analysis is that the gas and liquid exiting each stage are in equilibrium. However, this is seldom actually achieved in practice due to inadequate contacting of the liquid and gas. If bubbles produced on each tray are too big and or move through the liquid too quickly, the gas and liquid will not fully reach equilibrium. There can also be undesired mixing between stages. For example, if the gas flux, defined as the vapor flow per unit area of tray, is too low, liquid from one stage can drip through the gas openings to the stage below it. Conversely, if the gas flux is too high, it can blow liquid up the column, causing mixing between stages. Since these types of phenomena can be quite complex to predict and model adequately, they are often characterized experimentally on the pilot scale, and then experimentally based correction factors can be applied during design of a full-scale column. The type of correction factor you use depends on the type of column and what you're trying to accomplish, and what you can measure. If you're working with a tray column and have experimental access to temperatures and compositions at each stage, it's possible to describe the efficiency of individual trays. One commonly used empirical model for the performance of individual stages is the Murphy vapor efficiency, EMV, or eta sub V, which is defined as the difference in composition of the gas between adjacent stages divided by what that difference would be if the gas leaving the stage leaves an equilibrium. Here Y in and Y out are the vapor concentrations entering and leaving the particular stage in question, and Y out equilibrium is the vapor concentration the stage would produce if the gas exiting left in equilibrium with the actual liquid leaving the stage at concentration X out. We can use McCabe Thiele analysis to demonstrate the impact of Murphy efficiency on column performance. 
For example, consider the top stage of the column we looked at previously. The Murphy efficiency of this stage is defined as y1 minus y2 divided by y1 equilibrium minus y2. The denominator of this fraction corresponds to the length of a vertical line between the equilibrium line and the operating line at liquid mole fraction x1. Meanwhile, the numerator is the actual difference between y1 and y2, which up to this point we've assumed to be equal to the denominator, corresponding to a Murphy efficiency of 100%. But what if the Murphy efficiency was, for example, 75%? Since the value of y1 is pinned to the distillate concentration, this remains unchanged. However, we must move our vertical line to the right, increasing x1, such that y1 minus y2 is 75% of the distance between the equilibrium line and the operating line at x1. Repeating for the other stages, we can see that the values of xi will all shift to the right, such that we need more stages to achieve the same level of purification from a given pot or feed composition. One way to visualize what's going on is to sketch in a curve corresponding to the actual concentrations of liquid and gas exiting each stage. This curve, sometimes called a quasi-equilibrium or pseudo-equilibrium line, lies closer to the operating line than the actual equilibrium line meaning that the column behaves as if the relative volatility between the two compounds is less than it actually is thermodynamically, and thus they require more stages to separate them. This analysis shows that if we know the Murphy efficiency of each stage, we can use that information in a modified McCabe-Thiele or other analysis to better design a column. Conversely, if we have measured values of the gas and liquid composition on each stage of a pilot column, we can use that to measure the Murphy efficiency of various types of trays as a function of gas flux, and potentially apply that to the design of a full-scale column. If you're working with a packed column or other continuous contactor, like a glass or spinning band column that lacks distinct stages, it's usually not possible to measure the gas and liquid composition throughout the column. You can only measure the temperature and compositions of streams entering and exiting the top and bottom of a column. In this case, a common approach is to describe the column in terms of an effective number of stages, or NTUs, which is measured under a prescribed set of hopefully relevant conditions. This approach is particularly useful in batch distillation, where the goal is to predict performance during transient operation from an effective number of stages measured at steady state when the column is at total reflux. This is the basic idea behind smoke or rose analysis. Smoker and Rose considered a continuous gas-liquid contacting column having a large number N of effective stages, and a large reboiler with liquid capacity W much greater than any liquid holdup in the column itself. Thus, at any particular moment in time during a production run, concentrations and temperature inside the column can be considered quasi-steady. Meanwhile, the ratio L over V is assumed constant and uniform throughout the column. Under these assumptions, we can write a non-steady mass balance for the total material in the pot, as well as a species balance on the more volatile component, where xb and xd, both functions of time, are the concentrations of the more volatile species in the pot and distillate, respectively. Expanding the species balance and substituting the total balance in order to eliminate d, we obtain a relationship among the time derivatives of xd, xb, and w. Multiplying by dt and rearranging two separate variables, we obtain a differential relationship between w and the composition in the pot and distillate. So for example, let's say we start with a full pot of liquid with initial concentration xb0 of the light component. We turn on the boiler and let the column come to steady state at total reflux with L over V equals 1. Under these conditions, we measure the distillate concentration xd0. Using McCabe-Thiele, with an operating line at y equals x corresponding to total reflux, we can step off the stages from xd0 until we reach the bottom concentration xb0. This tells us the number of effective stages at the chosen boil-up rate. If we then switch to production by allowing some distillate to escape the column at rate d, the amount of material in the pot w of t will decrease with time. 
Integration of the differential relationship we derived earlier says that the concentration of the light component in the pot, Xb of t, will be related at any point in time to the amount of material remaining in the pot, W of t. According to the assumptions of Smoker and Rose, during this process the column remains quasi-steady with the same number of effective stages as it had when it was at total reflux. If so, we can use mccabe thiele analysis to relate Xb to Xd as a function of Xb, and then solve this integral numerically. One way to do this is to make a discrete list of Xd values spanning the initial total reflux distillate concentration, Xd0, to the lowest possible value of Xd you're likely to care about. Then for each value of Xd, solve mccabe thiele for Xb, assuming fixed L over V and N. This corresponds to making a series of parallel operating lines, starting at Xd, and in each case stepping off n stages to obtain xb for that value of xd. After this list of xd and xb values is obtained, you can make a plot of 1 over xd minus xb as a function of xb and fit this function to a polynomial in Excel. This polynomial can be integrated analytically to solve for w versus xb. Once w is known as a function of xb, we can make other relevant predictions. For example, we usually want to relate process conditions to the amount C and concentration Xc in the collected product. These quantities can be related by mass balance to W and Xb remaining in the pot. Taking C as the independent variable representing time, we can then use our previously acquired relationship of Xb and W to predict the pot and collected product concentrations over the course of the batch. This allows us to determine how much of the pot we can distill while still achieving a particular target concentration in the collected product, and how much time and energy is required, and so forth. The assumption that the number of effective stages remains fixed is most likely to be valid when the reflux ratio during production is kept large, such that the liquid flow down the column is about the same as it was during total reflux. This assumption is likely to break down as the distillate flow becomes a large fraction of the boil-up rate. One way to handle this is to measure W, Xd, and Xb as a function of time during an actual production run. By working the mccabe thiele analysis backward, one can determine the effective number of stages as a function of reflux ratio. At a minimum, this approach serves as a check on the limits of smoker rose analysis. At its best, it allows smoker rows to be extended to higher reflux ratios, where the design engineer might want to operate a batch column.